APIs enable a smarter CX. Let's welcome Ali Bouchouj to the stage. Stage is yours. All right. I guess it's still morning. Good morning. Um, I'm sure some of you are wondering what's a tech guy from retail coming to talk to mostly a telco crowd, right? How many of you here are in telco? Just raise your hand. Okay, yeah, the majority, okay. So um, what, what I'll try to do is, I'm only comfortable talking about the stuff that I know, so at least uh, I'll talk about the things that my team did, and what I'll try to do is I'll fall back on some of my prior experience in the telco industry, this is back in the 90s, so I can start at least pointing the um, relationships and similarities, so hopefully the content I'm presenting is uh, relevant. All right, so let's get going. Uh, a bit of a disclaimer, uh, just because when I was booked for this event, I was still CTO at Sephora, and now I'm actually on sabbatical, which is another topic. That's mostly what I've been discussing outside of this room, is how to do sabbaticals and things like that. Um, I can do another lecture on that, but not today. Um, so the, the views and what I'm claiming and all of that are none but mine. They're not Sephora's opinions, policies, positions, what have you, or that of LVMH. I'm still engaged with LVMH in different roles and stuff, but I'm here to speak as myself, not on behalf of any organization. Um, agenda. So I'll give a little bit of an overview of the relationship between APIs and uh, uh, customer experience, why it matters, then I'll give a specific example because I don't want to talk generalities, I want to leave you with some concrete examples so that uh, you can relate to it. And hopefully I'll close with a summary uh, of few nuggets that are generalized and hopefully if you can find at least one nugget out of those that's useful then um, I'm a happy camper. All right, so let's get going. Um, in, in customer experience, regardless of whether you're in retail, you're in telco, or any other industry, the first most important thing is context. You cannot deliver any kind of a meaningful customer experience if you lose track of what is the context, which is basically, who are you talking to, what are they trying to talk to you about, and why? Why are they there? Are they there to complain? Are they interested to discover some product or service? Are they trying to return some product that they bought from you? All of that matters. If you lose that context, if you don't have that context, your experience, your customer experience the delivery is not gonna be effective. And, and to construct that context, you have to be um, collecting data from multiple sources. Um, don't be satisfied just by, I'm, I'm looking up your profile. So I'm in a call center, a call comes, we detect who you are, we pick up a profile. And I think, that's it, I've got the whole context. Well, I'm sorry, that's not the complete context. So you gotta look back at things like, what is your interaction history? With, with, with the company. You gotta look up at things like behavioral things, which is a little bit more harder and sophisticated, right? Uh, what, what is the tone of voice of the person I'm talking to, right? Are they happy, are they excited about the product, about the brand, or are they actually very stressed, uh, very confused about how to use the product, or actually they're very frustrated about not having received the, the product or service they're expecting. So at the end of the day, context is everything for customer experience. Number two, if, if you're in any kind of technology industry like telco, sometimes we tend to focus more on the product than the experience. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the statistics and that's why I don't have all those slides up here, but what we're finding out from today's consumer, at least from the consumer perspective, with today's consumer, consumers are actually three times more interested in the experience than they are in the product. And actually most of the human beings, consumers, designers, they're actually interested in the experience that the product mediates, delivers, 
than the product itself. So if you have that in mind, when you're designing customer experience, and that's the other thing, customer experience is not something that happens by accident. It's not just something that emerges because you have the right product at the right price. Customer experience is something you have to design for. Just like you're designing a product, you have to design a customer experience. And communication and experience delivery matters. So what do I, what I mean by that? You've designed it, you know what kind of experience you want to deliver to your customer, but if you don't focus on how do I communicate, how do I reach to the customer, what kind of context do I set before I start my communication, your delivery is going to be very poor. Let me give you a simple example. How many people here have uh, watched stand-up comedy, right? Stand-up comedy is all about delivery, unlike my poor delivery here. I'm not a professional stand-up comedian, right? So with, with, with comedy, it's all about hitting the punchline at the right time. Otherwise, the stand-up comic is sitting there and they're giving the joke and everybody's looking and the only person smiling or laughing is the person who's telling the joke. Well, it, it, you, you missed the point, right? So, it's, it's about getting that delivery right. Um, so if you deliver the, 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 the customer experience right, after you've designed it properly, I can guarantee you one thing. From the surveys, again, we've done multiple times, you'll find that people will always remember the experience, even after they've forgotten about the product, right? Why? Because experience impacts people at a fundamental level which is the emotional level. And emotions is what creates the mem memory associations. Finally, we are dealing with a world where there is increasing complexity in everything we do, especially in customer experience. What do we mean by that? Our consumers, our customers are becoming more and more sophisticated. Um, they're looking for things that are multi-sensory. Our, our customers today, I, I can tell you about at least Sephora's customers, they're not interested in just a phone call where the only sense that, that is being engaged is the auditory system. They're engaged in multi-sensory experiences. They want to hear it, they want to see it, they want to touch it. In, in my previous world, they want to smell it, they want to feel how it feels on their face, on their fingers, and so on and so forth. And more and more, Technology is enabling uh, different businesses to create immersive experiences, right? Whether it's through VR, AR, all of these augmented reality tools that we have now. And regardless, again, you do not compare yourself just to the businesses in your industry. Because your customers are being trained by the Amazons of the world, by the Netflix of the world, by the Googles of the world. So anybody, amongst your customers who's been exposed to an immersive experience somewhere will actually expect it from you as well, regardless of whether your industry is in that type of experience delivery or not. And that's what raises the, the, the bar higher. Now, just to give you a little bit about Sephora. Um, how many people here have heard of Sephora? Okay, okay, the majority. How many people have bought something from Sephora? Okay, all right, not bad. So I don't have to do a little of explaining. So basically, Sephora is one of the largest global uh, cosmetics retailers, right? And what we're trying to do at Sephora is basically put the customer at the center. And that's rule number one in designing proper customer experience. You have to put the customer at the center. And then look at, what, all, what are all the things I can bring to deliver the ultimate customer experience, right? And in this case, it's about cosmetics, it, it's about beauty, it's about how the customer feels about themselves, right? And you can see the touch points. Um, it, it's a little bit overwhelming to look at all of this. So it's everything from the traditional store, which actually we totally disrupted and changed what that traditional store is, because you cannot deliver it, an, an awesome experience in a not so awesome environment. So we've changed that. 
We've augmented that with the people who are delivering the experience in the store. And we've changed the whole metaphor. So actually we've taken the metaphor of a theater. So the store becomes the front stage. The uh, Sephora employees who are working on, on the store are either on the front stage as cast, we call them cast, or they're supporting cast in the backstage. Literally, just like theater. Because again, you deliver any performance. So suddenly now, this is not just a place where I'm packing product. It becomes a place actually where you're delivering an experience, just like a, a theatrical performance. But we augment that with technology. Technology that brings information at the fingertips of our cast, our employees. So the employee is empowered, knows about the product, especially today's consumer is so darn sophisticated. If, if I want to buy uh, a mobile phone or a mobile service, guarantee you 90% out of 100, I have done research, which means I know what your competition offers, I've studied on the technology, I know what are the latest features. So you cannot have a bubbling salesperson just throw kinds of acronyms and overwhelm me with the verbiage. So you're talking now about a sophistication on the customer side that is unprecedented because again of the internet and the availability of information. The sad story is for most of businesses, they have not made that level of sophistication of access to information to their employees. So now suddenly the customer knows more about the product than the employee representing that, that product. That's not a good customer experience. And if you go, and I'm gonna go for you, I'm gonna go counterclockwise, and you go to the call center, it's the same thing. The old classical call center is dead. This is not just about a phone. It's about a phone, it's about a chatbot, it's about information that's coming in from different sources, from CRM, from transactional, behavior, all of that has to be at the fingertips of the person that's trying to service that call. Otherwise, you're gonna have a subpar experience. And then of course, as things evolve, what we've done is we've actually brought the technology all the way inside the home. We've had a collaboration with Google and we've used actually Google Home so that as she does her evening routine or her morning routine in front of her vanity, she has this pretty device that looks like a speaker. And when her hands are actually full, and maybe even greasy because she's applying a mask to her face or something like that, and she goes, oops, I don't know what to do next. She's not stuck. She can just say, hey Google Home, get me Sephora. And literally now, just through voice command, she has access to a Sephora support that actually advises her about what to do next, All right? And then, of course, the next thing is to have actually the magic mirror that has the camera, so actually the person on the other side is actually seeing what you're doing with your face and providing you support. I'm telling you now, not about a future, I'm telling you what e-retailer is doing today. So you can imagine the possibilities that you can project from that in terms of what the future can bring. And, and, and again, the same thing again, you, you have to be, she is connected into her social media because she's posting, she's, she's comparing, she's saying, hey, here is one look, right? Um, uh, let's say, for example, she, she's trying to get out and, and go out uh, for a dinner, and she's going, here's, here's one look with smoky eye, and here's one look without smoky eye, and she's sending it to her girlfriends, and she's getting instant feedback. So you're, you're seeing now, experience goes from my personal experience, and it's just me and the business, to suddenly now, I'm bringing in my social network as influencers into the decision making of whether I'm gonna make a purchase. And by the way, this is not just about cosmetics. I may actually be texting, SMSing, or sharing uh, different packages or different products 
for my mobile service with my friends and saying, hey, what do you think? Should I get this one or this one, right? So now, suddenly now, you're not dealing just one-on-one -on -one with one customer trying to influence how they make decisions. How they make their decisions is influenced by their social network, and you need to be plugged in that. So, uh, I, can, I can spend a whole hour on this, but what, what I want to do is I want to dig uh, deeper in terms of how um, APIs are enabling one specific one, which is actually the richest one here, which is the virtual artist, that allows now the customer to experience the product before they actually purchase the product. So uh, I'm not going to bore you to death about what is virtual uh, artist. Virtual artist basically is a way initially uh, we were thinking about how do we get our customers to experience the product before they purchase it? And how do we do that in a virtual way so that they don't have to come all the way to the store and open up a physical product, try it on li like a lipstick, right? And then decide whether they want to buy or not. But as we uh, evolved this experience, we started to understand that people did not only care about that, but they cared about other things, like what? Can you teach me how to use your product? How many of you find that's a big thing for your customers? Okay. How many of you today offer free online tutorials on YouTube or uh, some kind of a channel like that? Not many, I'm surprised. Well, guess what, I have news for you. If you don't start doing that, somebody else will and your customers will go where their needs are being met. It's that simple. And finally, what we did, we started initially again with the mobile device because that's the device actually that our customer carries with them 24 hours a day, like most of us. Uh, but we wanted to bring that experience and bridge it again back into the physical, into the store. So we brought it into the store by creating this idea of a magic mirror. And by the way, like I mentioned before, pretty soon we're gonna be delivering that magic mirror into your homes. So actually, your vanity is not just this dumb piece of glass that just reflects your image, but actually a very smart mirror that has a video camera that actually allows you, by your choice, to decide to share that or not. So that when you say, Google Home, get me Sephora, you can decide, by the way, I'm gonna share a video session with you, just like you're doing a Skype or a, or, or any kind of telecommunications uh, video sharing, so that you're getting live assistance. And it might sound revolutionary, but all of this technology exists, and by the way, you guys, the telecom industry is already providing that, right? How many of you are taking advantage in that to transform your customer experience? Exactly, very few. But the potential, you can see that the potential is tremendous, all right. So to, to build this, and this is what, what I want to communicate here, is how do you build such an experience? How do you start actually leveraging the, the power of APIs to deliver such an experience? So first of all, you always need to start with understanding the customer need, because that's what matters. Uh, don't start actually with understanding the architecture, what APIs I'm gonna use, is it SOAP, is it REST? Those are implementation details, you'll get to them, don't worry. But start with the right thing, which is, do I understand what my customer needs? And if I do, I need then to start defining the interfaces. And I really hate to even bring APIs here yet, because the minute you say APIs, people are thinking about code, right? And I don't want you to think about code when you're designing your APIs. Designing APIs is designing contracts, agreements. Can I agree with you in terms of what I expect of you and what you should expect of me? That's really what APIs are. REST SOAP is an implementation detail, right? But API design is about contracts and interfaces, the orchestration of contracts, um, any people here from legal or contracts? Because they wouldn't understand what I'm about to talk about. Contracts are about things like preambles that states, what is this contract between? It's about terms that says what you're allowed to do, what I'm allowed to do, what I should deliver to you, what I, what I should get back in return, right? And then it, it talks about uh, jurisprudence, right? 
which rules and policies apply to this contract, right? How many of you think of APIs this way and design APIs this way? Okay, the people who have their hands up, you got it right. Because that's how we need to think about APIs, they're contracts. Now, finally, then you have to overcome all the technical challenges, right? Um, technology, unfortunately, is very disparate. It's not homogeneous, right? So you've got different technologies. Some of it is legacy. Some of it is very interactive. Some of it is very advanced, like AI APIs and so on and so forth. But once you do that, then now you have to integrate and optimize, right? And guess what? It doesn't stop there. It's iterative. So if I want to summarize this at a high level with a chart that's probably a little bit more understandable, is you start with API ideation in terms of what interfaces do I need. You define and design the contract, right? And then you've got two tracks, basically. You've got the API provider, the one who's designing the API and going to make it available. And then you've got the API consumer. So you have to think about both. And for the API provider, of course, you test, you implement, you integrate, and you've got a whole continuous integration, continuous delivery, CICD. But for the consumer, they have to also be plugged. So if you're defining an API for a partner, for a customer, whoever it is, you need to involve them. And the earlier you involve your consumer, the better quality API you're going to have. OK, uh, I was going to go in the details of this, but I'll, I'll go high level because I don't want to bore you to that. So for us, specifically for the Sephora virtual artists, we had actually APIs for uh, AI APIs for actually capturing the face, creating a model for the face uh, with all kinds of uh, interesting APIs there. And by the way, we had to expose those APIs to a third party. We collaborated with a small startup called Modiface that eventually got actually acquired by L'Oreal. Um, so external APIs. Internal APIs to collect data from CRM, to, to start understanding things like brand affinity, affinity to different looks, things like that. And then finally, APIs to invoke recommendation engines. Engines actually that know how to recommend content, recommend a product, or recommend a look, or things like that. So in conclusion, I only have 30 seconds, so I'll see how, uh, how, how good I'm going to be able to do that. In conclusion, my recommendation to you, if you leave this room today with nothing but three things, then I'm a happy camper. Number one, you have to develop an, AP, an API strategy. And no, you don't need to spend $5 million in engagement with a big consulting company. All you need to do is get all your stakeholders, not just the technology people, but all the stakeholders, business, technology, and ask the fundamental question, why? Why, are, why am I using APIs for CX? What, what, what am I trying to get out of this? And how do I bring everyone on board? I mean everyone from the business, from the person who sits in the call center, whoever is going to be touched by this API needs to be part of that conversation. Number two, you need to execute iteratively. You're not going to get it right the first time. So if you don't get it right the first time, don't get frustrated. Try again. My, my motto is measure everything, learn from it, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, OK? Finally, build an ecosystem. This API business is not an individual sport, it's a team sport. You need to build your ecosystem of partners, find champions internally within your organization, find partners within your uh, ecosystem, technology partners, and design partners, uh, and more importantly, uh, make sure you don't create everything from scratch. Leverage API management platforms because that's gonna gain you a lot of value and a lot of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ali. So everybody starts to share his free content or somebody else will do it for them. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. Noted. All right. Yeah. Thank you.